Hello, beloved USU listeners. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Julie. You're a grateful host. And wow, today is going to be such an interesting and fun conversation. I'm so, so happy to have you here. Let me tell you about our guest. Dr. Betty Sue O'Brien received her naturopath degree from the School of Natural Medicine in Boulder, Colorado, before she retired as an instructor at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. Upon her retirement, she soon began practicing naturopathic medicine in Biloxi, where she shared an office with a physical therapist. Later then, she opened a health food store. Even though these venues offered many outlets for teaching self-care, she wanted to educate more people to be self-actualized and fully in charge of their own health outcomes. It is this desire that led her to become a diplomat instructor for the International Iridology Practitioners Association. Looking for an online format for her classes led her to a joint partnership with Dr. Wanda Seitz of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina in the Southern Institute of Natural Health. She is elated to bring the therapies and practices of naturopathy to her students, current, past, and present. To date, Betty Sue has three graduate classes with diplomas as at traditional nat- naturopa, and she has five books. Five, you heard me correctly. Six Weeks to a Healthy Lifestyle, Going Green the Smoothie Way, Causations, Using Iridology to Clarify Sclerology, Iridology, the core curriculum, and her latest book is a cookbook called Healthy Substitutions for Foods We Love to Eat. I am so honored to have you here today, Betty Sue. Honestly, this whole area of iridology is, I think, new to many of us, and I'm just excited to kind of hear your experience, your explanation, and just to have you here. Thank you for being a guest. It's awesome. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It's fun to spread the word. Well, let's, all right, let's start by spreading the word because I think for those listening, I I don't know, but I I know when I heard iridology, at first I was like, is that some sort of like green way of growing things or is that related to your eye? I couldn't tell. So can you share a little bit about, about what iridology is, what it means, and then we'll get into like what you do. Okay. It might be fun to just tell you the short story um, about how modern iridology came about. Um, We know that the American Indians used uh, the white of the eye to tell the health, the red lines. And we know that the Chinese used that for thousands of years. But um, in studying the Egyptians with the eye of Horus, we know that the Egyptians used the eye to diagnose uh, what was going on with the person. In modern days, we, there was an um, Austrian doctor who charted the eyes of every patient he had. So if someone came in with a kidney failure, every time he found someone with kidney issues, he went and looked at the eye to see if they had a certain mark there. And he started to see a pattern as he charted all of those things. So he was back in the 16th century. So he's kind of responsible for the early maps of the iris. And then since then, many others have, the map stays essentially the same as far as the locations of where's the heart, where are the kidneys, where's the brain. They, all your health shows up in there. Mm. And it doesn't show, like, I can't look in your eyes and say, I see diabetes. Mm -hmm. I can't look in your eyes and say, I see cancer. Mm -hmm. What it is, is your genetic patterns. And so it's, uh, I think it's probably epigenetic, meaning like pre-genes. So we're seeing kind of really what you're made of. That is, un, it's, it's believable and unbelievable just because I, it's, it's so, it's so exquisite, right? Like our bodies are just so brilliant and wise. I, I remember I took a course in Chinese nutrition and learned about the tongue um, and, and studying the tongue, how you can tell different um, imbalances in your organs. I like, so that I knew a little bit. And I remember looking at my tongue every morning. <laughs> yes. Like my line went down. I was so excited about it. Less scalloping. Like I was really charting my tongue for a long time. Um, yes. But the eye, like, you know, we know meridians, we know the ear, acupuncture, but the eye, like this to me, it's just, it's incredible. I, I, I had no idea. It's incredible. 
Well, well, one reason I got very interested in it, yeah. there, there are a couple of reasons, but one was I had uh, my next door neighbor uh, for many years was an ophthalmologist and a surgeon. And he used to tell me, because I dabbled in iridology, like playing around with it. And he said, you know, the eyes are the only window into the brain mm. because the optic nerve connects to the brain. So he says, so the, the idea that the eyes can tell us a lot about the body in general isn't foreign to doctors. You know, I mean, it's, it's well known. In fact, old doctors used to pull your eyelids down to see if you were anemic before blood tests. Mm. You know, they would look at their eyes and see if they looked toxic or yellow you know there's a, there was a lot of use of the eyes in the old days yeah and i actually got into it because one of my sons had a lot of allergies he was um he had weepy eyes uh, from seasonal changes and things like that and i took him to an iridologist who was an herbalist and she helped him so much throughout the course of his youth and teenage years and um, so I'm very grateful to her. And she would always say, you know, you need to get into this. Right. And she was just like a country woman who had kind of anecdotally learned it, you know, through books and looking at people and all. But um, I, I sort of went into it to disprove it. But then I was captured by it, as, as many people are, and found that there is a great deal of truth there. Do you have any like amazing stories, like a high point story or just a story from from your years of doing this that you can share one or two of those um yeah i have one that's really i have several tons but I'm one sure. really good story is there was a young man that came to me and he had been to oshner's hospital in new orleans and they had dismissed him and the only thing they could do for him he had to take twice a day b venom injections for the rest of his life because he was so allergic and uh, his head would swell up, his feet and his hands. And oh anyway, uh, they pretty much dismissed him. That was it. They had treated him. They'd done everything they could do. And he was about 25, maybe. Had a young wife. <clears throat> and I knew his mother-in-law. When they came over uh, and I looked in his eyes, the whole colon area and the liver, where it would normally say be light brown, was black, just solid, cold black. Yeah. This is an indication that there is toxicity in that area. And um, so I began interviewing him. I found out that he had, um, he worked as an auto mechanic. He hunted and fished and ate crawfish in fields that were dioxin sprayed, aerial sprayed. Mm -hmm. And he had this tremendous overload of toxicity. So we did uh, dietary changes, you know, got into do juicing and smoothies and salads and, you know, really changed his diet a lot. We went on two or three different cleansing regimens. One of the ones, a Saturday morning, his wife called me. This was like the second thing we did. And she said that he had gone to the bathroom. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> and whatever was in the toilet, was rubber like a tire and feet several feet long and it could not be flushed and basically i had to have them pick it up out of the toilet with tongs and oh take it outside because it was actually petroleum products oh my god wow. you know she said it smelled like petroleum products oh my gosh and that was the most dramatic i think story that i've had um wow i know and you know then he later changed jobs and moved to a different part of the country and he has two children and he's doing great so that was that was a good story right there wow that's incredible like you just it's it's a little scary because we're not realizing the toxins in the environment right and the foods and the things i mean I've been trying to educate on this show in my own life because um, I know I interviewed a um, the founder of a, a clean makeup uh, company that that you know a lot of our makeup for women has like thousands of chemicals in it. Yeah. I'm sure you. I'm curious if I don't know how that affects our face, our body, our eyes. You know, our. Oh my goodness! 
the skin is the biggest organ of elimination. So when you think about yeah. toxins in, toxins in, and so many women are constipated. They might go to the bathroom once a day. They might go once a week. Oh and God. I get so many young women in here, beautiful young women that are so toxic. Uh, their head is broken out and itching, their skin, they're getting rashes. Um, they don't sweat and they don't poop. Yeah. This is a serious problem in this country. Yeah. 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 But, well, we're get, not to, it's not off topic because I know you've written books on this. Um, and right. This yeah. is partly yeah. why I wanted to have you on this show. I really, I see this as a space to educate and to talk about what's going on. And that way we can make informed choices. I know I have redesigned my entire life to take out as much toxins and anything that's not organic and even my makeup. I didn't even realize it's actually when I had this guest chalet and I was talking to her about her company Naked Poppy and I tried some of the samples and I'm, and, and, and it just hit me. Like my head used to, I used to get itchiness. Um, mm -hmm. I think partly related to food too, but this is like serious. Like a lot of, especially women, you know, for using makeup, regular makeup, you know, most of us don't realize there's tons of chemicals or the foods we're eating. What, I guess, you know, you, you've shared some stories, but maybe, maybe there's another um, situation or story of how, you know, eating a certain way or taking care of yourself can really add to the healing. Oh, you know, countless. I, I probably get two or three uh, texts or emails every week or two from people that just say, you know, my endometriosis is gone, you know, all, I'm doing fine, all of that is great, I wanna take a class, I wanna learn more about how to do this. Um, <clears throat> I get people that come in after, somebody goes to an iridologist, right. or in our area, naturopath, as a very last resort. Right. A, you have to pay for it. Yeah. You know, B, it can be a lot more expensive than your copay at the doctor, you know, to pay for the time. And, um, I mean, I do have non-paying people, but I'm in general, you know, it's going to cost and cost more. Right. Um, but anyway, when people get here, it's usually, they are so relieved yeah. that they have got an answer, that yep. someone has looked at the puzzle. So yep. iridology is one tool in our toolbox that yeah. a lot of us use. Yep. Some people find it's too time consuming, but, um, it's, it's a whole study. It is a puzzle. Yeah. And the iris gives us a huge piece of that puzzle. Right. Um, Dr. Betty Sue, I, the iris. So I'm, I'm like remembering a little bit about the eye. That's the, the center part with the... Like if you see, if you can see this. Oh, thing. awesome. You guys, if, if you want to watch this, we're going to have it on YouTube as well because you're showing this great chart. Um, I can try to describe it, but yeah, let's see what you're going to say. Cause that's cool. So this chart is a chart designed by Ellen Jensen. Um, she's in Escondido, California. Wow. And um, what I wanted to show y'all was that the pupils in the middle, but you might've noticed like an eggshell, an egg yolk kind of shape around your pupil. Yep. Everything inside that circle, that circle right there, that egg shape is, your autonomic nervous system mm. and everything inside of that is your gut everything pretend the pupil is your mouth and as you eat food every single thing it goes through as it goes through your body is in that circle the black circle with the, that little tiny that circle no the egg shape around it like oh, this egg shaped yeah yeah right here that's your autonomic nerve reef there oh, i see and that's kind of a weird way to explain it, but basically wow. your digestion should be a closed uh, system. And so from your mouth to your anus, it doesn't touch the organs, glands, or systems of the body. The God set it up that way. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, people with leaky gut and gluten sensitivity and gut biome issues, yes. that's wrong. Wow. And what remind us, we talked about not enough pooping. What are some other um, symptoms of leaky gut and, and microbiome issues? And just for oh. people listening that might, I, I, I feel like if someone's listening and they have that, like, A, we'll have your information and, and you know, I know this is part of what you do, but what, what are some of those, um, yeah, what are some of those symptoms? Gosh, you know, there are so many ways to look at it. Um, you know, you can see, uh, 
uh, when someone is having gas, bloating, you know, all the things, belching. Number one, most of the time, uh, constipation, constipation. constipation and diarrhea. Yeah. You know, if you have a dog and you take them out for a walk, you'll notice that they poop after every meal, you know. Yeah. Um, they're a little stronger digestive system. So most of us are happy if we can get people to poop once or twice a day, you know, but at least the size of a banana, you know, something decent in there. Right. And um, that is where so many people, men and women, yeah. need support. They're not, you know, they're not dealing with it from a, I have to change my life standpoint. Yeah, right. You know, your gut biome gets off, your uh, yeah. firmicutes and bacteria deities get upset and they're fighting each other. Then you get big fungus in there. Yeah. And you know, the fungus are there to digest our flesh when we die. They're not there to have an active role, you know, while we're living for the most part. So we get these big fungus in there and our food can't get broken down. Then we don't have enough stomach acid. So mm -hmm. people think they have an acid problem and they're burping and burning, but they really don't have enough acid. Oh my gosh. So it's very crazy, complicated, that if you try to self-treat, yeah. Most often you get lost. Yeah. What is the culprit? If you were to say, I, I mean, I know this is such a dense topic, but some of the main, I'm thinking those that are like, um, I'd like to poop better. I'd like to feel better. Like, what do you think the culprits are to these issues? What are some of the things you see are really affecting us in a negative way? Well, the, the, you know, if you go, it's, it's such a big topic, but if you go right back to the toxicity in our hair products and in our makeup, yeah. And the fact that people are wearing synthetic clothing, you know, polyester fibers oh, are wow. on their body. Um, you know, when you take all that into consideration and you know that the skin is absorbing everything from Victoria's Secret lotion to mm. the polyester fabrics. So, you know, if you put a nicotine patch on right. or a hormone patch, you get that all day long. Right. If you put um, a gross you know, fake scented sodium lauryl sulfate lotion on. Yeah. It's going to stay with you and your, your blood has to deal with it and your lungs have to deal with it. Then we go and take a shower in a chlorinated, fluoridated water supply. So we're inhaling all of that into our other organ of elimination, our lungs. And you can see yep. how we get where we get. Yeah. But Let's go back to leaky gut just a minute. I said that because all of that ends up in the liver. Yep. Yep. All the fake estrogens, all of that ends up in the liver and the liver's got to deal with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that is where the gut issues generally begin is, you know, with not enough bile, not enough stomach acid, therefore not enough bowel movements. Right. So people start drinking, you know, 80 ounces of water every day. Right. And they actually oftentimes just wash their minerals out. Oh my gosh. And so we're all trying. Everybody's trying yeah. to do yeah. the best we can. But because of the internet, there is a lot of misinformation and a lot of information. I'm glad you have a show where you try to help people clarify and sort through some of these things. Oh my gosh, absolutely. So as I'm listening, you know, I talk a lot in this show also about using your body wisdom, your intuition. It's interesting. I have chill, I have goosebumps all over my body because it's just, it's prevalent and it's so in everything. Like I really, to be honest with you, haven't thought a whole lot. I've thought about a lot of things, but I hadn't thought about my, my fabric of my clothing or mostly lotions. Yes. Hair products. I could do better. It's a little funky with curly hair, but no, I can find something that's, 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 you know, natural that, um, the makeup I've done, but like, it's, you know, you don't always think about the water in your shower or the lotion, the type of lotion or so many of these things that you're saying, it, it can, it can get a little overwhelming. Um, do you have any, like, so that <laughs> we can have like a little bit of a, like, sigh, kind of, uh, give people like a toolbox where to begin. Like, do you have a, all right, friends, like this is, these are some things kind of like the dirty dozen don't eat these, you know, produce if they're not organic. Do you have any Maybe it's a list of five or 10 or things that we can just start doing now um, to start healing our gut and our body. Yes. I have a list called the top 10. Okay. You know, yay. That's what we want. 
I didn't, I didn't get it out, so I'll have to think about it for just a minute. But um, I did want to just a plug. Yes. Um, this book. Yeah. This, oh, that's your book. Beautiful. Six this weeks. is the reason I wrote this book. Okay. Is I've, I've, these are the chakras, by the way. I just saw that. Six Weeks to a Healthy Lifestyle. That's awesome. awesome. But I wrote this book um, in 2006. And every day people buy it on Amazon and they tell me, I didn't know. Just like what you're saying, chapter one tells you how to take care of your person, yeah. your body. Chapter two tells you how to clean your house, how to take care of your environment at work and at home. Yeah. And then chapter three and four about having an alkaline lifestyle, you know, and, and so I got tired of repeating myself over and over and over. Yeah. So now when clients come to me in person, I just give them this book or I ask them to purchase it before they come Right. or, or we have online consultations just so we're on the same page and we just kind of know that we got the basics. Yeah. So what would be, without going to the list, some of the basics that you can just oh. top of mind? Okay, so very first thing is to stimulate the skin and the lymph every day. Brilliant. I love it. That means brush your skin, you know, um, you take a dry washcloth and just rub your skin dry mm -hmm. and then oil it with coconut oil or olive oil before you shower or bathe. Beautiful. That opens up your pores and it puts a good oil in there before you get in that chemical water for your shower. Brilliant. So that's easy, that's number one. The second part of number one is to move the limp, you have to bounce. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you're through with your brushing, just do this for 60 seconds, okay. just this, 60 seconds, up and down. You can be sitting or standing, you don't have to jump, but moving the limp like that, huge. Okay. A third thing you can do, or a second thing you can do that I recommend is that every single day you use a scraper to clean your tongue, to get the lymphatic drainage off your tongue, not a toothbrush. Okay. That's okay. But a, a tongue scraper, preferably metal. Okay. You can get some plastic ones. They don't work so great. If you don't have a tongue scraper, use a teaspoon and just pull the back of the teaspoon across your tongue. Beautiful. Um, another thing I think is like hugely important to every aspect of health is quiet time, yeah. whether it's meditation or centering prayer or just walking without listening, you know, just looking at flowers, you know, relaxing. Um, I think that's a form of meditation too. Yes. Um, so, um, and then next is the breath. Mm. Like if everybody just hold your hands over your belly button and breathe into your hands for one second, just take a breath down low and don't let the chest go out and get that oxygen just circulating throughout the body to the extremities. Yeah. I could go on and on and on, Julie, but those are some really good ones. One I would mention is get your feet above your head every day. Oh, this is great. It's anti-aging, like either in a shoulder stand or just feet up the wall. Yep. Just yep. lay on the floor and put your feet up the wall. Um, watch Dr. Phil if you want to, you know, uh, it's something to just get circulation going in the opposite direction to help it. Helps yeah. the even, even five minutes of that, right? I mean, that doesn't have to oh, be. Five minutes is fantastic. That's what I said. My whole daily routine that I recommend people must do is 10 minutes. You know, it's skin brushing, oiling, jumping, tongue cleaning, you know, then five minutes of feet up the wall. If you just do that every day and then meditate for 10 minutes, yeah. you know, you'll have such an improved quality of life. Mm. And then add to that, getting rid of all of the things just gradually that are in your home that aren't adding to your well-being. Yeah. This is you know, awesome. Yeah, an essential oil diffuser can add to your well-being where a plug-in Glade air freshener is going to harm your lungs. Yeah, yeah, I love it. This is, um, you know what, these are some really, really fantastic um, tips. Good. Um, yeah, we haven't, 
I haven't heard that. I haven't heard these yet on on this show. And so I, I love introducing new fantastic yeah. habits that we can adopt. I, I'm like, as soon as we're done, I'm going on Amazon and buying a metal scraper because I I um I do use a water pick and I have a whole like I take very, very good care of my mouth and teeth because I know our gums are, I mean, are, re- are related, right, to heart and to our well-being yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, every tooth in your mouth is just like our odology. Every tooth mm. is on a meridian. And if you trace, if you have a tooth that hurts you or you have a problem with, trace the meridian. You can go online and see. And it might go to your, your thumb or your big toe or your knee. And yeah. the issue is in the body, not in the tooth. That's amazing. It's just, this makes sense. It's just, it's so fascinating. It's still really fascinating to me. Like you can tell your whole health in your eye. It's just, it's something about it is so cool. Back to the pooping question, because I think there are quite a few. I, I've had some beautiful, wonderful soul sisters that have talked about like really struggling. Um, yeah. I'm very grateful. That's not typically an issue, but um, are there any... <laughs> Any like basic things you can start to do that might help that to naturally happen in a healthy way? Um, yeah, what, you know, one thing is, um, of course, the first thing is always diet. Yeah. But I get people who say, you know, they, um, they exercise, they meditate, they eat right, you know, they just do everything right and it's still a problem. Yeah. Well, in our, in our radiology, actually there's a sub- group called Rayid, which is about your personality. Yeah. And there's there are two eye types. One is called anxiety gastric and one is called a stream jewel. Hmm. Um, but they both are so controlling of themselves yeah. and their environment that they can hold on to their own feces. Oh wow, which I know is really toxic. You don't want to do that. That's no because you know, your colon surrounds your uterus, your uterus goes, it contracts and goes to your breast. And a leading f- contributor to breast problems is the colon. Wow. Wow. I've not heard that. So obviously diet, I mean, it's a good place to start, but it's obviously more than just, then you're just, you, you know, first you have to find out what the problem is. Yeah. If you have a fungal overgrowth in your gut, there's yeah. a certain way to go about dealing with that with yeah. some antifungal uh, herb programs so that you can get the um the population straightened out yeah we also know that for certain other kinds of berberines which are certain uh, family of herbs yeah. such as golden seal and barberry and different herbs that are that gold color like turmeric right. and those can help to feed your good gut bacteria and um, then if you have leaky gut, then you have to heal the mucosal lining. Yeah. And so, you know, you can use, um, you can use aloe and slippery elm and marshmallow and um, you can use um, uh, certain types of, of other supplements, pre and probiotics, yeah. and then a certain type of fiber. Yeah. Not every fiber works for everyone. Right. I caution people, whatever you do, don't take Miralax or any of the products that are have propylene glycol in them. Yeah. Propylene glycol is what's causing the vaping problems in the lungs. And that's what's in all those laxatives. Mm, goodness. There's so much to digest here. Pun not <laughs> intended. <laughs> pun intended, pun not intended. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I was recently part of a group that was doing a juice cleanse. A, um, I was going to do a five-day. Most people were doing 40-day. They were trying to release the mucoid plaque, something like that. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you, and I'm saying this because I think it's important to know your own body. I started to do it and I did not it didn't feel right. I got to day three and I just, it was too much sugar in the juice. It didn't, my body did not feel okay. And I had this moment, you know, I'm like, why is it not working? It's working for everybody else. And I was like, you know, I'm a big believer, like our body has wisdom. And so I, I think you would agree. It's not the same answer for everyone. And so I have a very close friend who, who's in the midst, he's almost done and it's good for him. Like, it's awesome. It's just my body. I mean, I could feel it was like too much sugar too. This is not working. Like we do not want this. So listening. I I just had a girl do that. She was a client. She went without telling me she did uh, like an eight day juice fast. 
she was constipated for eight days yeah. and sugar. See, that's the, and when you said the top 10, it's got to be sugar. People yeah. who have gut issues cannot have refined sugar, period. Yeah. Well, yeah. even for, I'll tell you, because I, uh, it's a long story, but I don't, I, I took out sugar and gluten and soy and dairy, anything inflammatory. And I do eat fruit, but I'll tell you very minimally because I've realized I have to feel into it. it really, it can be inflammatory for me if I have too much. Yes. I think a lot of people, you, you're not, a, you're, that is not uncommon yeah. with people that have some issues with the bacteria or virus or fungus in the gut area yeah. because they're going to eat sugar in any form. Yeah. And we already eat enough uh, if it's, whether it's wraps or pasta or what, you know, it sneaks into our diet crackers, whatever. Yeah. And that's enough sugar. Yeah. No. Adding much more. So Dr. Betty Sue, where can people find you? Because I know you do see um, clients virtually. Um, they don't have to live in your hometown, right? You can see people wherever they are. Right. Um, yeah, I don't have a great system. People find me by default, but yeah. I do have, I, I have a couple of different websites. Yeah. One is just my, yeah, BettySueO'Brien.com. Okay. And one is Iridology Academy dot org. Okay. Um, and then I have a school, which you mentioned in the introduction and uh, people can email me from any of those places. Okay. Fantastic. I'm going to give the options, the Betty Sue O'Brien and the Iridology Academy so that we have ways. Cause I have a feeling, <laughs> I know we're going to do an appointment at some time soon. I want to, yes, we are, we talked about it. We just yeah. Yeah. Knowing what and a person does not have to have a picture of their eyes to have an appointment. Yeah. I have a good intake form and we can learn a lot. The eyes though are the icing on the cake. Yeah. You know, if you have that. Amazing. I just, I am so grateful you exist and you're doing this. This is really, wow. I feel like, you know, I'm hoping everyone who's listened, um, it's been, you know, heightened awareness and peaked interest and, Again, I'm always in this like state, I call it sacred awe of like our body and the divinity of it and the sacred aspect and the fact that we, you know, your eyes can tell your health, just like your ears and your tongue. I mean, it just your teeth. It's like, hello, <laughs> we're so much I more know. brilliant than people get. Like the, our body talks to us. It's about, you know, tuning in. We just have to tune in. Yes. And you gave some great ways to do that. In addition to the stillness, you know, put your feet up and the bouncing and the, I love the uh, scrubbing. I forgot about that. The brushing. I remember I learned that when I went to get my master's degree, they talked about it and I forgot. So I'm going to do that. Yeah. It's awesome. Okay. Good. Well, yeah, I know. I'm like, I'm doing all this. Thank you <laughs> so, so much for being here today. Like really, I just, I think it's fascinating and we will have all your information, um, in the show notes and people can reach out to you. And I know you've been super accessible and friendly and just a sweetheart with me. So I'm really thrilled that you're doing what you're doing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed talking with you.